Frank Ryan was a teenage IRA volunteer interned during the Irish Civil War who went on to fight in the International Brigades in Spain where he was captured and sentenced to death by Franco. In itself, not the stuff that film plots are made of. But what made Frank Ryan's story remarkable is that he went on to become, in 1940s Berlin, a spy working for the Third Reich and allegedly the inspiration for the Irish-German spy Liam Devlin in Jack Higgins' The Eagle Has Landed. Now, Professor Des Bell from the Institute of Irish Studies at Queen's University in Belfast has turned his short but colourful life into a docudrama, The Enigma of Frank Ryan, which gets its premiere tomorrow as part of the Jamison Dublin International Film Festival. I spoke to Des from Dublin earlier and asked him where his fascination with this character first began. Ryan has always been a bit of an iconic figure uh, within the sort of left in Ireland, particularly within the Republican movement, where everybody has applauded his uh, radicalism in Ireland and particularly this in the Spanish Civil War. But then, you know, when I still got to know this this sort of uh, whole story about Republican Congress and Ryan, then they said, oh, because he went to Berlin and we don't really talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a discreet veil drawn against it. And I'm talking about this is about 25 years ago when I first came across the story, and I never really intended to. But then a number of really rather good books were written, uh, you know, which really got at the facts and the evidence and started to unpack the whole story of what he was doing in, in Berlin. This is an amazing story. They had one or two attempts, uh, both in documentary and indeed in fiction filmmaking, to deal with the Ryan case because it's such a big expansive story full of adventure full of questions of loyalty uh, that it just seemed to be a story to tackle the difficulty always was how can you do this starting from where you start in northern ireland with a very limited budget <laughs> and that was the major challenge i think my way of making films is to combine live action with the use of documentary archive material from the spanish civil war some of it probably not seen before by an Irish audience, and uh, stuff in the, from the Second World War, including the period uh, when Berlin looks very normal and uh, it's not the sort of footage you normally see. It's footage we find actually in America, uh, taken by a, a young cinematographer, you know, very early in the war. Berlin appears completely normal. This is the Berlin that Ryan would have arrived in in 1940, uh, full of Nazi pomp and ceremony. But he was given quite uh, you know, substantial privileges, you know, uh, treated you know, as a diplomatic figure, really, uh, within within the Berlin world. You may recognise Berlin if you are a resident of South Belfast or a graduate of Queen's University, because <laughs> I actually passed the set when you were filming, and there, the Whitla Hall with banners, swastikas down the front, men in Nazi uniform, old 1940s cars. I wondered what was going on, and now we know it was the enigma of Frank Ryan. We shot the film in Armagh, in Belfast, Bangor, uh, and in France. We didn't have the budget, unfortunately, to go to Berlin. But Belfast is blessed, um, and a couple of other filmmakers have found the same thing, by a number of buildings which are directly of the period. And the Whitla Hall, which I think was built in 46 or 47, stands in very convincingly, I think, uh, both the exteriors and some of the interiors in the Queen's University, which again were designed in precisely that period. Similarly, Armagh Jail, which was the location, that's a wonderful place to work because it's just like... It's been left as an old prison was, you know, um, it'll probably about to be a museum, but it's perfect for filmmakers because it hasn't been mucked around and filmmakers have gone to that jail again and again and found it very resonant uh, in terms of trying to deal with something of 30, 40, 50 years ago. You mentioned the controversy, this being something we don't talk about, and I suppose that touches on the whole idea of Ireland's neutrality and what was an Irishman doing in Berlin in the first place? Were there deals being done? Were there secrets under the table? Has it opened all of that discussion and debate up again? And has the film then rubbed a few people up the wrong way? We're expecting a fairly lively debate <laughs> tomorrow after the screening of the film uh, because there are many people who think you just should remain silent about this. There has been really over the last few months uh, a whole series of articles in the Irish press uh, really rethinking and posing the question of Irish neutrality. Some of it's been very focused on the question of the treatment of uh, Jewish refugees. Some of it is focused on historical incidents like uh, De Valier going to pay his condolences to the German ambassador in Dublin on the death of Hitler. So that debate about Irish neutrality 
um, is going on. Why do you think you succeeded in making this film where so many others have failed? Because there have been decades of interest in making a story of Ryan's life, including I know Gabriel Byrne was very keen to do something. The fascination of the story is that the central character is an enigmatic one, but a very powerful. I mean, Ryan, by all accounts, was a charismatic figure rather than an enigmatic one. I mean, people had great respect for him. A woman adored him. Um, he was a man who demanded loyalty and gave great loyalty and great affection. And you know, he was held by practically everybody he knew with tremendous affection, even though people, even people like De Valeri didn't agree with him, had a fond spot for him. And I think we managed to make the film because we started with in uh, you know a realistic set of production parameters, by which I mean that we had support from the Irish language broadcaster uh, TG4. We were able then to get support from Royal Ireland Screen through their Irish language production fund because the, fin- the, fun- the film is made in two languages. It's made in the in English language version tomorrow, but it's also an Irish language version which will be broadcast by TG4. Having tackled the story of Frank Ryan, do you have any other great Irish figures in your sights for perhaps a follow-up? I am working on another project and um, I'm talking to your colleagues in BBC about it at the moment, but it's actually not about uh, an historical figure. Well, it's a, it's a historical figure. It's a woman in history. Um, it's based on a book called The Donegal Woman, uh, written by John Throne, and it's the story of his grandmother who had a child out of wedlock, uh, born in the poor house in Strabane, so early 20th century. It's a different sort of story, so it's a, it's a, it's a return to the countryside in some ways. Uh, watch this space, Professor Des Bell and the Enigma of Frank Ryan premieres as part of the Jemison Dublin International Film Festival at the Lighthouse Cinema in Smithfield, Dublin tomorrow and hopefully will be screened in Northern Ireland a little later in the year.